Okay, so we're out here in the garden today, and I want to show you how succession works. So right here on the ground, see this ground? This is a driveway. This is just bare earth. There's even plants trying to grow here. So when you see these plants growing in a place like a driveway, you automatically know that that is an early succession plant. Not a moss or a lichen, but it's still early succession. Uh, so right over here, this was the very same, but what I did is I put down four inches of compost on top of here, and there's a few weeds starting to grow in it, and all of them are early succession plants. This is a red root amaranth plant right here. Just a common weed. You can find these weeds everywhere in North America. Everywhere that I've ever gardened, these have been there. Early succession. So we know that this is kind of an early succession type of thing happening. So we're going to water this. We just put got this compost, compost down a couple of weeks ago. And this will be a garden uh, in the future, but we will never till this again. I shouldn't say again. It's never been tilled and it won't be. But this will never be tilled and we will just put down an inch of compost once a year and then we will just make a hole in the ground and put a transplant in the hole like a beet plant or a cabbage plant and that's how this will work but this will throw it from an early succession to a mid succession and so this is how we prepared that now if we come over here And you see this garden here? This is where I planted my uh, cabbages. Early in the year, maybe April, or I think it was March or April, there's a, a, a video on Patreon and it says, planting way too early. Well, this is where I planted those cabbages. And we got some funny little cabbages. They didn't do very good. We really did plant them too early. It stressed them out way too much. March and April is a good time in most places. But we're a month or two months off in this climate because we're very high elevation and we're in the um, foothills of the mountains. And so that was like me transplanting them in January or February in other places. Way too early, it stressed them out, but I wanted to see how it would really do. I did get six small cabbages and I got, uh, I think, eight um, broccolis that were about that big. But I didn't have big, luscious, beautiful plants. There's still one cabbage plant over there, and I left it there because it's still producing and it's still going to do good. But what I've done here is this was previously tilled last year, and then this spring I just drilled holes with the little auger in the ground, and we put the transplants in. So this was getting kind of ratty with all kinds of crazy stuff in there growing. So I took the lawnmower over it, and I mowed it down, and then we just put this hay on it. This is just old rotten hay. It hasn't been composted properly, but we are covering the ground. Anything you can use, any biomass you have to cover the ground, do it. Cover the ground. That's how you take these arid, wild um, places like we live here in the Western United States, and you can take it from early to uh, mid succession. So this will never be tilled again. We have tilled this in the past. But this will never be tilled again. So next year, what am I going to do with this? I'm going to put on compost, and then we will plant right in it. And if weeds come up, we're going to have to pull them out. But after a time, maybe one more year, we will have very few weeds. We'll hardly have weeds again, ever again. And so we won't need that. And we won't need to till. We don't need to pull weeds. We won't need any of that stuff because we're going to a mid-succession because weeds only come in early successions. Let's move on. So in this area here, I have six rows of potatoes and there's a different variety in each row. I'm raising these for to see which ones do good in our climate. So I have some red uh, potatoes, some purple ones, some uh, just big beautiful white potatoes. I have the Yukon Golds. So we're just trying them to see what grows here. My thought is they're all gonna do good here, but we'll see once we harvest them. And then I have uh, some asparagus and strawberry plants growing here too. So this was just bare dirt when I planted. And then we brought in the old hay and we just mulch, we just stuck it in there in between them so that there's no bare dirt. We want to keep that principle, no bare dirt, never have bare dirt. Don't have bare dirt. Never have bare dirt. You always keep it covered. I don't care how you cover it, just cover it. 
Okay, so th this entire garden will be a no-till system. We will not be tilling anymore. Mo let's move on to one more thing here. I have eight piles of compost here, and I took uh, Elaine Ingham's course on uh, her soil food web class. I finished the foundation courses. I'm right in the middle of the um, the next one, and we're making compost as part of that class. Compost has always been a tricky thing for me. I've been teaching gardening seminars for 15 years, and I don't understand compost until I took her class. I've been making compost all my life. I've taught classes on compost. Um, but compost can be really tricky. You need so much, your carbon to nitrogen ratio. What does that even mean? And you read all the books and then the books confuse each other. I'm not sure the authors even knew. They were just publishing stuff. But after taking Elaine's course, she cleared it all up for me. So I'm gonna do a whole series on composting. I'm probably gonna have six videos on composting and I'll make them part one, two, three, four, five, six, just like I've been doing some of the other videos to explain this and try to take the mystery out of it. But it's not something I can do in one video. So we're gonna break it up into parts and I will tell you what I have learned from her class so that you can start making great compost. This says number two, because this is compost pile number two. So each compost pile has its own number. And underneath here, they're nice and wet. Look how yucky and wet that is. So that's pretty good. We mist this every day to keep it moist. It's late after noon right now. The smoke from the forest fires has gone away enough that we actually had some sunshine today. And so it's dry to touch out here, but you go in one inch and it's nice and wet. Well, I just wanted to make this quick update video on how to what we're actually doing here to change the successions. Instead of just having me sitting on the couch preaching, I thought we'd come out here and get dirty and show you what we're actually doing to change the succession. Thank you very much.